Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone welcome to the course on medical biomaterials uh, today we are going to talk about uh, biological responses. So, when you implant a biomaterial or when a biomaterial comes in contact, um, what are the responses that is going to happen? So, maybe this class and the next class uh, is going to be little bit uh, biology. Um, those who feel that it is too much, maybe you can just look at it superficially, but uh, I think um, students with the biotechnology background or uh, medical microbiology background um, or medical biotechnology background should be able to appreciate this. And it is very important that uh, you also come to know what are the various biological responses, mainly um, platelet activation, blood coagulation, inflammation, complement activation. All these are very, very important uh, because you have a foreign body that is being placed inside the human system. And uh, we cannot just ignore, an engineer cannot just ignore this aspect and uh, believe that uh, a biologist or a biotechnologist will take care of that. So, we need to know little bit, okay? uh, but it is going to be little bit heavy on the area of biology now in the, this class as well as the next class. So, if you look at um, this slide I talked about in the previous class also. So, we have a biomaterial uh, immediately, uh, the protein gets ad adsorbed proteins like albumin, okay, uh, immunoglobins, fibrinogen, etc. Okay, this uh, um, can have the platelet adhesion and activation. Uh, this can also have effect of coagulation system activation, which can lead to thrombosis. Bacteria can adsorb on top of the protein. Some of the proteins uh, enhance bacterial adhesion, some of them do not. So, there is a biofilm formation. This leads to infection. We did talk about this aspect quite a lot uh, in uh, maybe a few classes back, if you remember. Then we have this leukocyte adhesion activation, complement system activation leading to inflammation. So, all these are happening okay, uh, as soon as the biomaterial is placed. So, we need to understand a little bit of uh, this uh, coagulation system, platelet adhesion thrombosis as well as the aspect of inflammation. Um, so, when any material when implanted leads to or initiates host response because that is the defense system. So, many things can happen, the host takes care of it. Uh, results from tissue trauma during implantation because uh, when there is a uh, surgery done, opened and any medical device is placed. So, there could be a trauma and the presence of the implant in the body. So, this foreign material is going to be present inside. It could be weeks, it could be years, it could be for the rest of the life. So, there could be a tissue response, there could be immune response because immune system in the human body is very, very important. It is our uh, uh, defense. Um, when there is a foreign body, immediately the immune system takes over and tries to destroy this foreign body. Okay? So, there is an injury because uh, the um, physician uh, or a surgeon has opened uh, and placed a biomaterial. So, there is an injury, uh, the material, there is a blood material interaction. Uh, there is a matrix formation, acute inflammation taking place, chronic inflammation. Then there is something called granulation tissue, foreign body interaction, fibrous capsule development. So, the whole um, fibrous tissues tries to encapsulate your entire biomaterial. So, that is a lot of defense things happening. So, you have inflammation taking place here, the acute inflammation and the chronic inflammation and then a lot of uh, immune response taking place here. Okay, and here you could be having a blood material interaction, platelet activation and there could be um, thrombosis forming, all those things can be happening here. Okay. So, we will look at each one little bit in more in detail. Okay. So, what are these tissue response? It includes inflammatory wound healing process because uh, the surgeon has opened, uh, created a wound and there is a foreign body. So, there is a wound healing response, foreign body interaction and finally, fibrous encapsulation. Like I showed you, you know, there is a fibrous encapsulation that is taking place here. Okay. So, the one of the four types of uh, tissue response, toxicity of the material because uh, the material itself could be toxic 
um, the um, which may be killing your cells. There could be some leachant. For example, it is known polymethyl methacrylate is made up of acrylic acid. Acrylic acid could be a little bit toxic to the cells which may lead to cell death. Polylactic acid is not toxic, but the lactic acid could produce some acidic uh, response which could be leading to cell death. So, toxicity of the material. Non-toxic nearly inert material. So, if you have materials which are absolutely non-toxic, then you are going to form fibrous tissues of various thicknesses. So, there is going to be fibrous capsules around, this could be soft and hard tissues. Then non-toxic bioactive material uh, formation of interfacial bonds, because uh, the material itself is bioactive, so it interacts with the biological system, so there is an interfacial bonds are formed. Non-toxic dissolving material uh, replacement by surrounding tissue, because the material is getting dissolved. So, we can have four types of material, materials which gives you toxicity. And there are material which are inert, not toxicity. There are material which is non-toxic and they are bioactive. And there are material which are non-toxic and they disappear. So all these reads to different types of responses, as you can see on the right-hand side. Okay, so we need to understand each one of them little bit in more detail. So what happens on the immune side? So you are implanting a material. So there is an injury to tissues due to surgery. Injury subsequently. So, all these leads to inflammation and so there is going to be adaptive immune response because of uh, all these. So, what is this biocompatibility? I very, very big in the beginning I said all biomaterials have to be biocompatible. So, this is the ability of a biomaterial to provide an appropriate host or biological response uh, for a given application in the body. So, there are many ways by which we can do biocompatibility assessment. I did talk about it uh, in the tools. Uh, we used uh, different types of animal cells and see the cell uh, death. We looked at uh, um, okay, cell proliferation, cell adhesion uh, and we also looked at whether there is a membrane damage and so on actually. Uh, test whether the material performs as intended, also has no significant or potential harm to the patient. The material should not be creating any adverse biological reactions. Okay? There should not be any allergy coming into. Okay, for example, one material might not cause allergy to me, whereas uh, the same material may be causing allergy to somebody else because of metal um, related allergy or uh, uh, polymer related allergy and so on. Uh, so, there should not be allergy, there should not be toxicity uh, to the body. Then uh, cytotoxicity is the biocompatibility is by the cell culture cytotoxicity. So, what we do is uh, we uh, test the uh, cells and see whether the cells are able to live or not get uh, killed and um, we look at the proliferation, cell adhesion, proliferation, activation and death. So, these studies help you to understand whether the material is cytotoxic or the leaching, leachants uh, from the biomaterial also cytotoxic. So, generally this is done to cell culture assays, we did talk about it a couple of classes back if you remember. Um, so, further into biological response to biomaterials. So, initially as I said proteins get adsorbed. Then there is an activation of the coagulation cascade, activation of the complement, activation of the platelet. So, the blood contains lot of uh, these. Then activation of polymorphonuclear leukocytes, it is called PMN, monocytes, residence macrophages. Then there is a danger signal released from damaged tissues. Then immune cells show enhanced function via patent recognition receptor. They are called PRR, patent recognition. So, all these are called immune response. So, activation of the coagulation cascade related to the blood. So, the blood tries to coagulate, complement, platelets, activation of PMN that is polymorphonuclear leukocytes, monocytes, resident macrophages, okay? that is your defense mechanism, immune. Danger signals are released from the damaged tissues. So, the immune cells show enhanced function via patent recognition. That is the immune. Now, we have the inflammatory response. So, there is an acute inflammation. So, it leads to activation of monocytes and macrophages, chronic inflammation. So, foreign body giant cells, fibroblast activation. So, all lot of foreign body giant cells are formed. Again, it goes into immune response, macrophage derived cytokines and patent recognition receptor engagement activate dendritic cells that is DC on the biomaterial surface. So, all these are formed. 
okay? they are trying to engulf uh, the uh, biomaterial that is the immune system. So, as soon as the blood proteins get uh, absorbed, so we have the immune response, we have the inflammation response, so so many things start happening here. Okay? Um, so, we have the immune response happening here, there is a long cascade, okay? uh, biomaterial induces either tolerance or immunogenicity, this is called the tolerance side, this is called the immunogenicity side. So, in the tolerogenic signals, uh, we have T cells okay? uh, induced, they are called T cells here, whereas in immunogenesis, we are going to have a um, active polymorphous nucleosides. Okay, high antigen presentation. So, so many steps are happening. So, we get activated B cells, then differentiate into antibody secreting cells. Okay, these are the real defense um, which tries to kill the antibodies are produced, which tries to destroy your biomaterials. So, the biomaterials indu induces either tolerance that is this side or it reduces, produces immunogenicity. So, that you get antigen antibody. So, this depends on the nature of the stimulus that is modulation of tolerogenic signals or pathogen or damage associated molecular patterns or okay, damage associated molecular patterns. These signals are recognized by pathogen recognition receptors that is the PRR okay, as I mentioned here um, on dendritic cells. So, amplifying or suppressing the inflammatory response. So, biomaterial if it is um, either a inert or a bioactive can lead to tolerance or it can lead to immunogenicity. So, uh, during the process of immunogenicity, we are going to have antigen antibody type of uh, reaction taking place here through a series of steps. So, let us not uh, worry about uh, all these various factors that come into the picture, but that is what happens okay, when the biomaterial is uh, placed inside the body. Now, uh, let us go deeper. So, thrombosis, complement and coagulation all these things are going to happen um, as soon as the material comes in contact with the blood, okay, the blood material interaction. Especially if you are going to have a, a cardiovascular stent, uh, if you are going to have a diaphragm, um, really heart diaphragm or if you are going to have a small diameter vascular graft or large diameter vascular graft. So, all these are blood contacting device. So, the material should not um, lead to um, activation of the platelets or, uh, or the um, leukocytes all those okay, which can lead to quite complications. So, the blood material interaction leads to a complex series of events protein adsorption, protein gets adsorbed in the biomaterial, platelet and leukocyte activation, activation of complement and coagulation. Okay. So, as soon as this forms you are going to have blood coagulating and settling down on the biomaterial which may lead to thrombosis. Okay. So, the blood material interaction this leads to protein adsorption first, okay, blood plasma protein and fibrinogen and also. Then we are going to have platelet and leukocyte activation adhesion, activation of complement and coagulation leading to thrombosis also. So, we have the biomaterial we have the protein adsorption here. Okay. So, we can have one side platelet activation leading to coagulation, we can have leukocyte activation leading to complement. So, both these things can happen um, for um, blood contacting devices. Okay. Okay. So, you need to understand little bit of this as well as little bit of this and that is what we are going to show in the next slide. So, for example, look at this, um, we used to do some experiments on polymers. Um, which are uh, in the area of blood contacting devices. So, when we incubate it uh, with the um, blood after 30 minutes of incubation, we can see thrombus formation here. Uh, we modify the polymer so that it does not uh, um, lead to this activation and hence the thrombus formation. So, this is a modified polymer, you can see there is no thrombus formation. So, there is a lot of difference, right? So, uh, blood contacting device ideally you should prevent the thrombus formation whereas, here you can see the thrombus formed. Polyurethane finds application quite a lot uh, um, in uh, biomaterials because it is very flexible um, almost like uh, rubber okay, and it is very pliable. So, we can do lot of things on that. 
okay, that is the advantage of using polyurethane. So, polyurethane is used in diaphragms and so on actually. So, let us look at this coagulation that is this coagulation here. Okay. Uh, there are many factors in coagulation, one is called the intrinsic pathway, other is called the extrinsic pathway. So, we have the surface, so there is a, um, there are many factors, okay. factor 12, factor 11, factor 9, 10 and so on okay. uh, in the intrinsic pathway. Um, intrinsic as the name implies, um, the material is in touch with the surface, the blood is in touch with the surface. This is extrinsic uh, because, because of trauma, uh, some factors are getting activated. So, there are a lot of factors here as you can see, okay, many factors due to intrinsic or due to extrinsic. So, we have prothrombin, it gets activated by this factor 5A uh, leading to thrombin, which activates fibrinogen to fibrin. Okay. And this fibrin is a stable cross-linked which forms the blood clot. Okay. It is useful because uh, when there is an injury, we need the blood to clot. So, these factors are very, very important um, so that the blood clots. But then when we are using a biomaterial, the biomaterial is eluting uh, this particular uh, um, response for the blood to clot. In that case, we it is not desired, but, uh, whereas in real life, we need the blood to clot if there is a injury, whether it is an open or inside injury. Okay. So, all these factors are very, very important for the, the clotting of the blood, especially the fibrin, uh, which comes from fibrinogen uh, activated by thrombone, thrombin. Okay. The prothrombin gets activated to thrombin, which uh, converts fibrinogen to fibrin, and uh, this stable fibrin is the clot. But um, in the presence of a biomaterial, um, these two pathways could get activated. Okay? So, there are many factors which get activated. So, there could be formation of blood clot like as I have shown in this picture. Whereas, in this picture as you can see another modified polymer, there is no blood clot formation. Okay. So, one side of it is uh, coagulation, uh, blood clotting, the other side is the complement which comes from leukocyte activation. Okay, what is this complement activation? This generally is part of the inflammatory response. This occurs usually during cardiopulmonary bypass, hemodialysis with catheters and prosthetic vascular grafts. Um, so, we are talking about materials like a polyesters, uh, polytetrafluoroethylene um, and so on. This complement activation has three pathways, classical, lectin and alternate and biomaterial generally works on this alternate pathway. Okay. Um, in the case of an activating surface, presence of nucleophile, this promotes binding of something called C3B, which promotes C3 and CB convertase formation. Whereas, non-activating surface promotes binding of C3B and its association with factor H. Now, this complement activation is also part of the immune system that elevates the ability of antibodies and phagocytic cells to remove microbes and damaged cells and promotes inflammation. Okay. So, uh, the um, complement activation is also important in the normal human system because uh, it helps uh, um, to repair damaged cells, it also helps to remove microbes uh, through the phagocytic cell. So, in a normal human being this process is very important, but when you have a biomaterial place, um, this process uh, is not uh, desired. Okay? So, this complement pathway just like uh, we looked at the coagulation cascade, we have lot of uh, factors, here also we have a uh, lot of complement coming into. So, classical pathway, lectin pathway, alternate pathway. As I said, generally biomaterials or foreign bodies uh, um, uh, elucid this pathway. So, we have inflammatory cell infiltration activation, um, then it leads to basophiles, isnophiles, uh, monocytes, macrophages and you can have cell death happening here. So, because of this pathway, a uh, lot of complements are uh, activated, this can lead to cell lysis. Okay. So, um, again going back, protein adsorption, biomaterial, so we can have two things happening, the platelet activation. Uh, 
blood clotting coagulation or we can have leukocyte activation leading to complement cell lysis that is cell death. Okay? Mm, then comes inflammation and wound healing. So, we are going down. Uh, if you go back and look at uh, again our old uh, picture, okay, here we have the inflammation, we finish the blood. So, we have the inflammation happening here, okay. Or again, if you go back here, inflammation that comes slightly later, uh, but we cannot really say later. And so, things happen so fast, so it is very difficult to. to um, tell. Okay. So, there is an inflammation uh, and wound healing because uh, the surgeon has opened the um, human part to place a biomaterial. So, wound is created and there is a presence of a biomaterial which also leads to uh, certain uh, inflammatory response and wound healing responses. Okay. So, injury and biomaterial implantation, inflammatory cell infiltration like neutrophiles, um, PMNS, monocytes, lymphocytes edema, vascular leakage, all these things happen. Okay? Um, so, two things can happen. One is uh, fibrous capsule formation or foreign body joint cell formation which just, just uh, encap uh, encompasses your biomaterial. So, we have, uh, uh, let us look at this pathway biomaterial. So, plasma protein adsorption, provisional matrix formation, this um, like I talked about complement and coagulation monocyte addition to biomaterial, macrophage differentiation, uh, macrophage fusion, foreign body joint cell formation. So, all these are happening in this root, whereas we, we have exudate tissue, acute inflammation, these are called mast cells PM, chronic inflammation, then we have granulation tissues, fibrous capsule formation. So, this is another root uh, which tries to repair your injury and which tries to lead to inflammation. So, we can have this root which leads to foreign body joint cell formation, we can have this root which leads to fibrous capsule formation. Okay? So, uh, uh, when you have a biomaterial and you are testing it out say for in preclinical trials in animals, um, after a month maybe you can see whether uh, it leads to foreign body formation, it leads to fibrous capsules and granulation tissues. What is the extent of uh, these tissue formation with respect to control? All these tells you um, the, the uh, response this biomaterial is creating in the host system. Okay? I just want to show some uh, pictures, uh, scanning electron pictures of ours um, where we are looking at fibrous encapsulation of implants. You can see uh, this is a polymer polyurethane, uh, this is another polyurethane modified system, this is another polyurethane modified system. Okay. You can see here uh, this shows you how the fibrous encapsulation of implant is going to take place. So, we can see here uh, all these are called inflammatory cells. Okay. Um, similarly, collagen network bundles are also getting formed on uh, the uh, biomaterial, so trying to encapsulate. Okay. As you can see collagen network here, collagen as you can see here that is happening there. Okay. So, the fibrous capsule uh, is trying to encompass the biomaterial. So, you can see in some cases thick bundles are formed, in some cases thin bundles are formed. So, um, the thickness some cases very large almost 18 microns okay, in about 30 days, in some cases we get only 4 microns as you can see here. Okay. So, the fibrous capsule. So, when you look at the histopathological, uh, we can see the same thing fibrous capsule. So, in one case thickness of the fibrous capsule is very minimal, in some cases it is very large. Um, we can see different types of cells that are present, whatever I left, uh, lymphocytes, plasma cell, macrophages, neutrophile, lysinophile, fibroblasts, all these are various cells that are formed due to the inflammatory response. Okay. Uh, due to the presence of the biomaterial as well as due to the uh, surgery that was performed on the host. Again, you can see um, multinucleated foreign body giant cells. Okay? You can see multinucleated foreign body giant cells. All these are pictures uh, from our research uh, when we pay, play, place a biomaterial in an um, animal model. After 30 days, we can see uh, what these biomaterial, um, what type of response these biomaterials uh, create in the host system.
okay. So, as you can see, okay, these are all uh, multinucleated, this is multinucleated, right, multinucleated foreign body giant cell formation after 30 days, okay. So, uh, we see a lot of things uh, happening and uh, all of them are uh, uh, towards the defense, host defense system, um, especially um, if there is a blood uh, contacting device, you immediately have uh, the uh, blood plasma addition, um, sorry, adsorption we would say, blood plasma adsorption, then the platelet activation as well as complement activation. Then we also have the immune system response, um, then we have the uh, inflammatory response. So, the inflammatory response also is useful for the wound healing process. Uh, during that process, we are going to have uh, uh, different types of cells form like the foreign body germ cells and um, we have, uh, we are able to see fibroblasts, macrophages, plasma cells, eosinophil, neutrophil and lymphocytes and so on actually, okay. So, uh, the biological uh, response is extremely complicated and a little bit of uh, this knowledge is very useful. Uh, for a um, biomaterial researcher so that um, how uh, the system responds and uh, how does one modify the biomaterial to prevent uh, these type of uh, system responses. And also depending upon the time duration uh, of the bi biomaterial, for example, uh, some of these pictures uh, which I showed you now, these are all almost uh, 30 days of uh, implantation. So, if the uh, implantation is much very, very less, you might not be really seeing uh, these type of uh, infl inflammatory response. And then again, um, if the uh, device is not contacting with the blood, then you are not going to have platelet activation, thrombin and thrombosis and blood clotting. Those aspects could be completely ignored, okay. So, we will continue more on this uh, biological response. Uh, to biomaterials by the host in the next class as well. Thank you very much for your time.